These new cards are about to break Yu-Gi-Oh! Let's talk about it. What's going on guys? My name is Susu from Head to Head Battles and in today's episode, we need to talk about Triple Tactics, the new cards from Magnificent Mavens, and just the huge power creep we are about to see. Now, this is going to be a rant video, so sit back, relax, grab the popcorn, and hit that subscribe button. Also, make sure to chime in on the conversation in the comment section because we, uh, really need to talk about this one. Let's talk about triple tactics. And this one really requires no talent, right? A lot of you are asking, Susu, what does this card even do, right? Triple tactics is a normal spell card that reads, if your opponent has activated a monster effect this turn, you can set one normal spell or trap directly from your deck, except itself, and it cannot be activated this turn. Or, if your opponent controls a monster, you can add that card to your hand instead. Now, why is this card so broken? And why is it slowly grinding my gears, right? You can literally set any of the virus cards in the game, and you can literally search every out in the game, right? And on top of all that, if your opponent uses, let's say, um, Hobnus, right? And they have a monster on the field. You can use triple tactics to add to your hand any spell card that you want, right? now. Imagine if your opponent hand traps you, you know what they're playing, and you can search a card like Artifact Sanctum, Dimensional Barrier, or a Floodgate of your goddamn choice, right? Okay, look, look. I know Power Creep is something that you really can't avoid when it comes to card game, when it comes to card games, because you need Power Creep to keep the game fresh and moving, but this is getting kind of ridiculous, right? If you look back, even with the power of the elements and the level of power creep it introduced into the game, and then look at the next core set and Magnificent Mavens, the level of power creep has gone from year to year to set to set. Now, it's been a while since we really needed an, an emergency ban list, but once Ishizu tier limits become a thing, and trust me, I've been in the lab, people are gonna be people riding once they see that every play can go up to like chain link 10 or 12. Now, before you start typing in the comic session, oh, but Susu, Dark Ruler breaks every board in the game, you literally have to hard draw a three of in a 40 card deck while the new decks have a consistency level like never before, right? If you've watched any of the new deck profiles for the new decks coming out from Darkwing Blast, Mavens, and Photon Hypernova, almost every single deck has a consistency level of about 90%, which is nine good hands for every 10 hands that you draw, right? Like the fact of the matter is, the age old argument of, we have tons of options to break boards these days, doesn't really hold up anymore because these new decks have powerful effects that trigger in the hand, graveyard, and extra deck that may not be affected by cards like Dark Ruler no more. The next thing that we need to talk about is the brand new Kosh Tree Law archetype that we are getting in the new core set Darkwing Blast and Photon Hypernova, okay? That new boss monster literally reads like a custom card, okay? Someone over at Konami let their child write whatever they want on a card and gave them the okay to print it. That's basically what happened, right? This card is a walking macro cosmos. You have a once per chain, not a once per turn, but a once per chain effect that gives it more XYZ material. And on top of all that, you can quick effect detach three materials, target one card, up, uh, one card on the field and banish it face up, okay? Now you're thinking, you know, this card doesn't sound that broken. But what you are missing is the fact that Shangri-La says that whenever an opponent's card is banished phase down, you can choose an unused monster or spell and trap zone and, and turn it off. That's right. It's Ojama time, baby. Now no, now, no archetype is only good if the extra deck monsters are good. But did you know the Kashri la main monsters are all special summonable if you control no monsters? And did you know they are all huge beat sticks that either add you a monster, spell, and or trap card. Now, um, I'm what you would call a, a competitive player, and I do keep up with the meta at all times, but even I think that these new cards are a touch over the top. Let me know in the comment section, but I feel like the times where older decks had a chance to compete with the newer ones are coming to a close, okay? Older decks had the ability to use generic cards to help them chug along or get you some wins here and or there, but the new decks coming out are so powerful that even the in-archetype cards are already better than what older decks can handle, right? I really do think we are at a tipping point in Yu-Gi-Oh where the divide between casual and competitive 
is now going to be wider than ever, right? The times you could walk into a locals or a regionals with a deck like Heroes, Medolches, or Strikers and, and win are going to be long gone, right? Now, that doesn't mean you won't be able to play like rogue decks and see some levels of success, but we are moving into a tier zero format where if you aren't playing some variation of the best archetype at the time, you won't be able to compete at the higher tables at the events, let alone get something like top 32. Now, if you look back at pre pot format, where the best decks were Sword Souls, some Punk variant, and some deck with the Brave Engine, you also had a multitude of other highly competitive decks like Fluanderies, Exosisters, DDDs, and every other rogue deck underneath the sun. Now, let me know in the comment section down below if you prefer a tier zero format where the only top two decks can compete or if you would rather have a diverse format where you could really take your deck building to the next level and win something like a YCS. So let's move on to post post format where now the only decks that were truly seeing success were some tier limit variant or a deck that can specifically beat the deck by being able to main deck dimension shifter. Yeah. We went from being able to compete with over half a dozen decks to basically playing the best deck or a very specific way to counter said deck, right? Now, the crazy part is once we get all the new generic support like triple tactics and the new splashable engines like the upcoming Ishizu cards, blowout cards like Dimension Shifter all of a sudden don't feel as powerful as before, right? And once again, you need to realize that you need to hard draw Shifter as opposed to a Ishizu tier player literally using one card to mill another card and then mill another five cards, right? Now, for those of you <laughs> who have no idea how the Ishizu deck works, make sure to subscribe to the channel because we're gonna be releasing a, a uh, deck profile and a combo tutorial video. And we're also gonna be releasing a video on how to stop the deck. But I'll be very honest with you, okay? It's gonna be a short video because, um, you basically can't stop it. Now, the last thing that I do wanna talk about is where do we go from here, right? Are we going to be seeing more and more powerful decks where the last court, the core set archetypes are just unplayable? Or has Konami released a fresh set of ideas where we can shape and maintain a healthy format for at least the next year or two, right? Power of the Elements introduced a level of Yu-Gi-Oh that we haven't seen in, in, like, in its lifetime, right? And Darkwing Blast and Mavens will inject another wave of ge insane generic and archetypical support, right? Now, I know there was a large divide even within the competitive player base because as a competitive player, we understand the implications of the new cards that are coming out and exactly how broken they can be under the most generic of circumstances, right? Like, I truly feel that the casual player base won't be able to compete like they used to even at the locals level simply due to the fact that the decks they are playing simply cannot handle the newer strategies that are being introduced into the game. Anyways, boys, thank you for sitting through my rant video. This has been on my mind for quite some time and I needed an outlet to really get this conversation started. Now, I hope you really do join in on the topic down in the comment section down below and make sure to subscribe for the channel, well, to the channel, because we have some huge things that are coming up, right? But boys, I've taken away too much of your time already. This is Susu from Head to Head Battles, signing out. What's, What's up, up guys? guys? If you haven't subscribed, make sure to click that button right there in the middle. Also, if you haven't watched that video that YouTube is recommending you, it's probably crazy, alright? Go watch it. This is Susu from Head to Head Battles. Signing out.